Let's speak to the person who's sub 10 people right now and they're going, hey, okay, I, I, you know, yes, I feel the chaos. Yes, we're still growing, but I, it's like, I'm overwhelmed. I'd like to have, you know, a little bit of, uh, 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 I want to have more clarity. I, I want to do less things. I'm wearing too many hats, right? Um, which is pretty standard for most entrepreneurs. And so let's talk to that person and go, okay, what are some things that they can do? Maybe it's not a full rollout of EOS. Maybe it is. I'm curious about your perspective for a business that's sub 10 on how they can start to create some order in their business and make some sense of this, increase their clarity um, in a way that doesn't feel like they're just trying to roll out a an excessively structured thing. Right. So EOS is is, a, is like a complete set of tools. So there are, there are over 25 tools in the EOS toolbox. For most companies, we start with about five of them. And I think that's, you know, the five, basically the five foundational tools of EOS are the way to get started in something like this. Um, when we do EOS with somebody, we actually do traction first and vision second. So in our focus day, in our first day, we help you guys get clear on your accountability chart. We help you get clear on your, on your you know, sort of some 90-day rocks and goals. We get an issues list together for you, and we help you with a scorecard so you guys can start measuring things, uh, activity-based items that get you to your goals. Yeah. And then we help you install what's called a level 10 meeting. And so for just about anybody, that's a really good path. The Vision Traction Organizer will help you get super clear on your vision so you guys are all on the same page. Um, and then we put a little discipline accountability in there with the level 10 meeting, the rocks, and your scorecards. Okay, so let's let's break this down a little bit. So let's imagine you're talking to a mortgage professional who has two, three, four team members. Um, what if you had to choose, in in your opinion, in order of this is what I would do if I was you? Um, what's like the top three EOS tools? And let's don't just talk, don't just mention them. Obviously, you're talking to somebody who most likely doesn't know what EOS is, or maybe they dipped their toe in it, but you know, kind of went back out. Let's talk about them, but let's also break down what they are and why they're critical. Sure. Okay. So the first thing I would focus on is I would, uh, you know, go to EOSWorldwide.com, you know, put your you know email address in and, and download the EOS tools. Okay. It's going to give you all the EOS tools. This stuff is 100% free to self-implement. Um, I would say if you're a visionary in your company, I would probably, I'd probably listen to the book, Get a Grip, just to give you some foundational, um, idea of why you should do this. Traction is more of the manual of EOS. Get a grip is more of the fable of EOS and how it works in a company. Uh, I would say those are, are a couple of must reads for you. Um, and even though EOS is a complete set of tools, if I had to narrow it down, I'd say these are the tools I'd focus on. Um, number one, take that vision traction organizer, sit down with you and your leadership team and answer the eight questions. And those eight questions, I'm going to go through those really quick just so you understand what they are. Um, you know, it's obviously not very complicated. We're asking you eight simple questions. But uh, number one is what are your core values? A lot of us, you know, we hear the term core values and, and I don't know, I guess some sort of us are repelled by it a little bit because it's, you know, you see it on a poster or, or on a mug and that's not how people learn core values. Um, what core values is in EOS is what does a good person in your organization look like? What qualities do the, does somebody that you would wanna work with, somebody that you want on your team, what qualities they exhibit? And so you create the core values around, you know, not integrity and honesty, and th those are a given. If you don't have those, you shouldn't be in business, right? Right. Uh, we're not gonna do that. Enron, one of Enron's core values was integrity, right? So, <laughs> so we get a little dated when we hear shit like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we don't do it like that. What we do is we, we basically ask you to, to, to list out like who on your team is a rock star, who's your best employee, what qualities they exhibit, who else, if you could clone that person, like if you had a hundred of them, you could take over the world and what qualities do they exhibit? What does it mean to be a great person at Good Vibe Squad? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a great team member? And so that's what our core values are. And we want to define that for you. And then we've got to figure out your core focus. Uh, core focus is really your sweet spot. It's, it's who you should spend your precious time and money and your marketing dollars and your effort on, on focusing your message on. So we create your core focus and that's really about who is your ideal customer. Um, 
what is your 10 year target? This is really about setting a, you know, BHAG, like a big, hairy, audacious goal that gives you all something to work towards. Uh, question well, number four. The, the, is the one heart. thing before you move on, one thing yeah. that was also really powerful for us that, you know, is was kind of the understanding that a 10 year goal really is a five to 10 year goal somewhere in there. Right. Because like marketing is ever changing. I mean, you know, you look at chat GPT, I mean, none of us know what marketing is going to be like in five years, 10 years, you know, but, but five is a little bit more, okay, let's, we could try to make sense of that picture a little bit easier. Right. So I think just for those listening, um, the 10 year goal is really, it's the long term vision for, okay, what are we doing? How are we growing this thing? What, you know, what does this organization look like in the future? Um, but, but 10 years, I think is more of a, uh, kind of a recommended middle ground. It sounds like. Yeah, the timeline on on the you know ten year target is really anything from five to thirty years. It depends on you and your industry. Um, in the internet marketing world, we we have we move faster, and so almost everyone in in our marketing clients they uh, they go with a five year target. But it's anything from five to thirty. It just depends on your vision and how big it is. Um, but the but the goal here is it's not again not a huge long document written out thing. It's a very simple metric. It's like we want to hit you know fifty million in sales in the next whatever, whatever. It's just a simple goal, but it's something we can all get behind. So we can all see where we're this, where we're headed as a company. Yes. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, we do that. And, uh, question number four of the VTO is what is your marketing strategy? And, the, and we break that down into a couple different things, you know, uh, you know, it's your core marketing message. What are your three uniques? Um, what is your proven process and what is your guarantee? And each one of those, you know, is breaking down, broken down in the EOS tools. Um, the important thing there is when you create your 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 core marketing message, um, a lot of it is is why you do what you do, um, and it, and it's usually bigger than money. It's it's, I love your guys's message. I think it's really really powerful, um, and, and if it's okay if I share it, it's of course, home ownership for everyone. You know, I, I believe it's something around there. Uh, yeah, and and I love it. It's it's powerful. Um, you guys want to empower people to to own homes. It's it's the American dream. And you guys are, are pushing for that every single day. It's beautiful. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we help you define that, uh, define what your team can get behind and why you do what you do. Um, and then, of course, we, we help you create your three uniques, what you makes you different than everybody else. I think that's really important when you speak to someone and you got a little elevator pitch that you, you sort of have to have and about, you know, why, why would I hire you versus your competitor? And then, uh, and then we start to take that vision and we start to bring it down to the ground. We start to make it real and give it some traction with a three-year picture. So we've created this vision, this big thing that we're all after and why we do what we do and what it's like to work here and who's a good person and who we want to surround ourselves with and, and who's our ideal client. That's sort of the vision stuff. We're going to start to make that real with a three-year picture. So we're going to say, okay, if we've got to be here in five or ten years, where do we have to be in three? And not... And we're, we're really going to visualize this at some point in this exercise. I'm going to tell you, tell you to close your eyes and imagine what it looks like, you know, and we're going to, we're going to create and we're going to paint a three-year picture because the closer we can get all of our team sort of seeing that in their mind's eye, the, the higher the likely are, the hood is that we're actually going to achieve it. So we create a three-year picture and then we start to get real here with a one-year plan we say, all right, if in three years we have to be here, what are our biggest goals over the next year? What do we have to accomplish over the next 12 months? Okay? And we're going to create a, a one-year plan. We're going to create your one-year goals. Then we're going to break that one-year goal down into quarterly rocks. And we're just going to sit down and say, what are the things that we have to get done in the next 90 days?